Hi, Thirsty people. I'm Shari, and welcome to Season 2 of Thirsty and Theory, a blind thing, the blind chat show and smarter love. And I'm Bea. So Shari and I actually made the mistakes before so that you don't have to. We've got you, ladies and gents. We're going to be your official or unofficial researchers on love and relationships. Exactly. So guys, please do us a favor and share this video with your single and ready to mingle friends. And please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd love it. Yes, sir. Subscribe. Somewhere. Here. Yeah. There. Yeah. Wherever. Everywhere. <laughs> so guys, we have a special guest tonight to help us. Mo Twister, the most recognizable voice in the Philippines. In our formative years, he was our gateway to the world of, of sex and dating. Through his morning show that we weren't really allowed to listen to in the cars going to school, particularly yes. his forbidden questions, right, Bea? Yes, it was my morning wake up. I'm not a morning person, but definitely forbidden questions that woke me up. And I was like, okay, now I'm motivated to get out of school, to graduate <laughs> and get out of school and just experience life as we heard it on radio. Yeah, yeah so let's let's bring him in. Hi guys. Hi. Hey. Hello. Hey Shari, hey, hey. Man, thanks for having me. It's nice to be here. Oh geez, uh, this looks so organized. I love it. Oh, <laughs> I, try guess, I try to guess on a lot of podcasts or online shows because I love the medium. You know, I've been around uh, the online show thing for for some time, and every time I see people, you know, pick it up, especially during this COVID time, right? A lot of people have come up with their own online shows and podcasts. I'm so thrilled in helping support it any way I can, whether it be through guest things to talking about it and all that stuff. So I want to congratulate you on what looks to be a powerhouse show for for, for the two of you guys since, since uh, late last year. So congratulations. Thank you. You're the, yeah, thank you. You're the cherry on top of this powerhouse weekly. Uh, I've, I've seen some of the people who've been on the show, man. I got to tell you right now, do not even, I'm not even, uh, I'm not even the uh, pinipig pig in the uh, halo halo. It's, it's <laughs> You're the ice. You're the ice. That's the most uh, important thing. You are the core of it. I, yeah. Well, my favorite halo halo um let's see ingredient would be maybe kaong or the nata de coco. So if I could be any of those things, that mm. everyone goes for the leche flan, which I think is too little. So no, well, fine. I'll give you that, but it's not. Uh, here's what I don't want. Don't put the big ube scoop on top. <laughs> really, <laughs> just makes it massive and and uh, unenjoyable because. By the time you even get to any hint of the rest of the good stuff, you're full. We can do without the ube ice cream on top, just like we can do without the, I don't know, the cheese on the puto. Like, let's just kind of keep Oh, yeah. It, right? We, we don't need to yeah. all that I'm stuff. I'm going to debate that. Egg. But I'm just kidding. Egg. Well, how yeah, how yeah. badoy am I? That's my favorite part of Halo Halos, the ice. Badoy. The ice in the milk. That's no, I, I wouldn't call it badoy. I, I mean, I think it's... Well, like 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 you said, it's the star of the show, right? Mm -hmm. and, Fine ice, yeah, you know. And, mm -hmm. yeah, you can. I mean, when and, you like when you take the Koreans, right, and they have the bingsu, you no, know, yeah, if yeah, you, the ice, yeah. right. I mean, you can throw mm -hmm. it like, the ice that really does. It is it, right. So, yeah, but the way ice, not at all. Might even be mm. the best answer. Okay, so you are the ice of the show tonight. <laughs> Actually, this is perfect because you know the ice bucket challenge, right? Like where everyone gets waken up by this bucket of ice. And I just feel like we've been doing this show for a few months and always has been the goal to stop women or men na mabudol sa pag-ibig. Yep, yep. Uh, yes, I'm sure you've experienced, we all experienced this. We can't lie about that. So mm -hmm. tonight, we really want to delve into a man's brain, specifically yours, and yep. just give us the old, like, I guess the ice bucket. Just chuck it, like throw it virtually to us. And so Sherry and I have been thinking about this topic. And our theory is that women find it hard to pick a partner because they're wearing rose-tinted glasses in looking at potential partners and themselves. So we want to, we'll delve into that today. No pressure at all. We just want ice all over us. That's the logic. Here, today. Here's the thing. So I, I do a love podcast, right? It's called Good Times in the Middle of the Podcast. People talk about love, life, sex, all that stuff. From and, and you get these calls and predominantly the callers are females. I would say for every four calls, three are girls on average, right? And my, what I feel like my job is, is to tell them what's going on in the real world, in the eyes of your average guy, your garden variety guy. And it's so often that I out guys for the crappy behavior and the crappy mindset that we have. So as much as you're like, okay, hey, Mo, like you're like, you're a guy, tell us, I'm going to, your guy audience, your guy listenership going to hate me after this show. 
Why? We need that. We want that. Because he's going to out them. The dirty yeah, little secrets. This is bad, dude. And <laughs> I, 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 I know somewhat, maybe some of the stuff that you're going to ask, and it's not going to make us look good. So sorry, but it is what it is. That is exactly what we need because I've been having this conversation with another friend and he was saying like, let's just be monks, which is it's probably better to just. No. Yeah. Guys are bad. Let's just start with that and then I'll prove it later uh, as we go. <laughs> okay. okay, so we have a warm up. It's actually a love problem. Fair enough. Uh, okay, we'll start off by this is someone uh, from one of our followers and she asked, Dear Thirsty Girls, I've been single since birth, 26 years old. I have zero experience in dating. I want to know how do you decide whether to want to be in a relationship? Do you actively seek for one or just wait for it to come? I know some people say in the Philippines, but I'm not sure I can just leave it to the universe. Although I'm also scared to date right now due to the pandemic and horror stories I've heard about dating apps. What should I do and what do you think? Help, single since birth lady. Okay. Am I the answer? Are we all answering? How does this work? How does this segment? Let's start with you, with the ice. Let's okay. The ice. It's, it's a little bit of both, right? It's a little bit, a little bit of being active, being proactive, looking for guys, but you don't look for them aggressively, right? Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, the the moment you a guy sniffs that you're looking, we're going to try to take advantage of that. And that's really the key thing, right? Is taking advantage of you. You have to be careful with, with that. Um, and then you obviously can't wait for everything in this world to fall on your lap. That's not how your career works. That's not how anything else in life works. You actually have to go out and get it. But it's 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 a it's a um, it's a measured amount of assertiveness that you want when you're looking for a relationship. And don't be so scared off about the apps. I mean, yeah, there are bad ones out there. Tinder. There are bad ones out there that you know, are clearly, <laughs> I mean, the guys there are super low quality, but don't, mm-hmm. don't, uh, don't, don't say all dating apps are bad. I'm sure there are some out there that are good and there are success stories, but you just have to know which ones you're getting into. Uh, is there any other part of that question that I'm missing? Um, yeah. Uh, Do you guys want to jump in on something and I kind of react to it? Well, I have used dating apps though? and yeah. Have you used dating apps before? Who, me? Yeah, before. Yeah. I- no, you know, listen, I I have not been single for a very long time. And that that dates pre dating apps. Shit, that might even date pre any app. I mean, I've I mm-hmm. usually don't like being single. So when a relationship ends, I tend to have a girlfriend rather I wouldn't say immediately, but sometimes, you know, the it, it it's a short amount of time of being single. It could it could be so- measured. It could be measured in weeks, maybe even oh, less. Wow. So you don't okay. do the three month rule. <laughs> I, no, there's no rule. And in fact, honestly, maybe even my younger years, it, as a, as ashamed as it is, I might I have overlapped just to oh. assure, just oh. to assure that when I break up, there is somebody I can text good night to even the very next night. You know. That's wow. good to know. I was Plan telling Shadi this the other day. There is hmm. no three month rule because. As much as I'd like to believe there is, I have been left by many men, and they've jumped ship right away. Okay, so here's, they- a okay here's a here's a, here's a secret number one. Out, out men number one. If you dump us, if you ladies dump us, say you dump us. I know, well, what's a good dumping time of the of the day? Is it evening? Is it morning? Mor- morning, pa lang. Okay, so give me a okay, okay. like nine a.m. Nine a.m. Uh, we're looking for our next in. Maybe we'll have breakfast. Maybe we'll do a couple video games. I would tell you right now, it's not going to be past lunch where we're already texting somebody else. Okay, that, that, automatic. Okay, <laughs> and if you're gonna if if, if a guy is gonna message you and say, "Hey, most full of crap," that's a lie. Well, you are the exception to a very very broad <laughs> population of guys who do that. Um, everybody, all of them do. Speaking of statistics like that, right? I have a relative. Well, yeah, a relative of mine whose line in life is always like, you know what? Don't look for a loyal partner, Shari. Because 99.9% of men cheat, I promise you. Fact or fiction? Uh, I wouldn't say 99.9% because then, I mean, obviously this is uh, baseless statistics, right? But but it's going to be the great majority. And I would even say that females uh, are right behind us in that number. Um, I think cheating... I think we are all, we're all either going to do it, have done it, whether we're the third party or the criminal involved. 
we're all going to do it at some point. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how old you girls are. I think, Sharon, you said you're 30. Bea, I don't know how 31. old you are. Let's say, yeah, okay, let's say you're in the same ballpark. I mean, if you haven't cheated yet, uh, I would be surprised, but there's still a lot of time. The night is young. <laughs> uh, the night is young, I've been cheated so on. are we? Okay. Yeah, but yeah. Have, have you cheated? I have not, but maybe mentally I have, because there's such a thing as also mental right. cheating. Right, and that was going to yeah. be my next th throw out to you guys, is what do you define as cheating? And that's what we're, that's a very fluid kind of mm -hmm. conversation. Some people think, well, if you just text another person behind the back of your partner, mm -hmm. that's cheating. And I, I, I'm totally with that. Like, if that's how you I define agree. it, I'm with you. I'm with you. That's totally cool. It doesn't have to be sexual. It doesn't have to be, we went out on a date, or we held hands, or we kissed. It could totally be, are you withholding a friendship even that I don't know about with the opposite sex? If I think that's cheating, hey, guess what? That's cheating, right? It, it, is, it is a fluid and yep. subjective definition. I think it is though. The more intimate, it's more intimate holding hands. Bakit? Yeah, holding hands. Why do you need that elsewhere? Like, I mean, you, I mean, there's certain sexual desires you can't um, provide for, right? So, but yeah. okay, fine, do that. I mean, not okay, fine, but the worst in theory, you know, intimate things like holding hands, watching movies. No, no way. Okay, well, the worst. Okay, well, sorry. When you say mentally cheap, yeah. what have you done? Have you texted a guy with your boyfriend not knowing? Yeah, but the worst excuse I've ever gotten from a guy is I found him in bed with a Colombian waitress. We owned a restaurant together and he took home one of the waitresses and he said, I couldn't say no because she looked like this famous porn star. I was like... So you walked in <sighs> having sex? You walked yeah. In uh, no, they weren't, but they were post asleep. I don't know what... Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I didn't look yeah. anymore. Well, <laughs> okay. yes. That's really so, funny. And I'm sorry that happened to you. That's really awful. That's it's okay. We're over it. It's a comedy. It's a comedy. It's a comedy. <laughs> it's a comedy. Okay. So, okay. Miss Single Since Birth Lady, I hope we helped you. And I have to add, don't be scared of dating apps. They may be scary. Yes. I think 99.9% .9 of the apps, whatever you do, you're going to find perps in there. But my advice with apps is go in it with a sense of humor. You get a random dick pic, just laugh. Send it to your <laughs> friends. Move yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. And if people are rude, be rude back. You can always humiliate a guy by saying dick pic is the worst one you've seen this year <laughs> or whatever. I mean, trust me, guys can be humble pretty quickly. You just have to be really good at it. And if you're not good at it, send me a message on IG. I'll come up with an insult for you. No problem. And we'll move so on. Good. It's a good yeah, hotline. I, I think yeah. we need that. No, so I'm like, oh, I think I'm going to have either a club, was a clubhouse. I'm going to have an account where if you need somebody insulted, just tell me. And that's all I'm going to do. Like, that's that's just the entire thing. You tell me what they did, I'll tell you how to uh, rebut. And That's like a roast. It's like yeah. roast, but shoot your shot. I actually went on one of those. I didn't know that it was actually, they were roasting you, but then it's also a way to slide into someone's DM. I thought, I was like, oh, I want to be insulted. But I did. <laughs> I, lo I love I a jumped, good roast, yeah. I jumped on stage and I was, they're like, actually, it's people flirting with each other, but you can insult them. I was like, that's weird. I'm not turned on by it's like insulting. a it's like a great it's like a great school approach to flirt like a playground approach to flirting. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. Now I get it. Okay. So Mo, we did a bit of a two parter here. So we'll start with the first half. We call it spark and chemistry. So okay. as women, and I guess men also, we are a bit rom com obs obsessed. And I feel like that causes the whole the bar is set too high. So Bea and I, we, we read this book called How to Not Die Alone. And uh -huh. there's a whole chapter there called Fuck the Spark. Oh, you can um, curse the show. I love it. Okay. Of course. Yeah. Oh. So what do you think of the spark? Fuck it or look for the spark? Okay. Define to me, though, what this book said about the spark. Just give me a little bit of what the spark is. Because I think, we, again, we, a lot of this stuff, we have our own personal definitions. Is the spark mm -hmm. initial reaction? Is it initial like, okay, look at me. I'm lusting over this person. Or, oh, my God, look how dramatic <laughs> this person is. Or, look, I mean, what's what would be the spark for you or said literature regarding it? Essentially, it's like you're looking for a prom date. Like, you have the looks, you have the blah, you have the blah, 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 versus finding somebody more long-term. Um I mean, a stable you, quality. Okay, so how do you even know which one is which, though, right? I mean, if you meet somebody, can you really control whether it's just, oh, my God, look, they're just super attractive, and I'm only here for the short term, or, hey, look, uh, they're super attractive, or, or I'm attracted to them. I think this is more than that. How do you, how do you know that in the moment? You, you get what I mean? How do you decipher which one is the long term and which one is the short term, unless you're already kind of 
I don't know, looking not to take it seriously from the beginning. I mean, there, there's an initial intense, um, an intense things to, uh, versus a slow build up, right? Or B and I like mm. all the slow burn. Man, like we've experienced both like a slow burn and one that's like all in right away. I just I cannot fathom how people can control that. I think a lot of this mm-hmm. stuff is said because again, this rom com life, this rom com mentality, these self help books, podcasts like mine, um, and this and this yeah. Yeah. That, that, you know we we try to we try to have a formula and say mm-hmm. follow this formula, but in reality, can you really can you really do it? Can you really? understand that you can control yourself to these limits when you find somebody amazing. I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. So, um, uh, fuck it. The spark. I mean, no, take anything, anything that lights up the moment, whether it be sexually charged light or whether it's, Hey, this is person is really, I love, I like what they're about. I like their, you know, the charisma. I like their sense of humor. I like their money. I like their boobs. Whatever the fuck it is, I mean, that's what it is. And you just go with it. I mean, how many times... Listen, I've had two girlfriends that I started with that I hated their guts when I met them. Like, really? <laughs> what did you hate? Like, why? I, just, like, just, hate. I had to work with them. And I was just like, yeah. was irritating. And I felt like they were too into themselves. And there's all of these problems for months before. But did that last? Did those relationships last? Well, of course not. Because, I mean... It, 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 we, these are girlfriends I said in the past, right? right. But yeah. what I'm saying is it developed into a really great relationship and one that I'm actually rather proud of. So I think the spark can be, yes, it can exist and it, you can embrace it or it might not ever happen. And then you still develop somehow, some way into an amazing relationship months down the line. There's no real formula. And and I think it's, um, it's easy for us to do and it's fun to think that there is one, but no, I'm going to pass on it. But what about okay. a formula to finding somebody long? I mean, we are in our thirties, hence the show, and the pressure is real. So neither finding like I'm gonna start dating somebody and then he's ready yeah, to settle down like five this, years down the road. Yeah, this will be very traditional. If you want something a bit long term, I say this on the show all the time: stop having sex with them early. Uh, I've heard this. Advice. I'm a big hold out yeah. a year. Take sex out, sex out of the equation, and if you take it out of the equation, you'll see how long these guys. Uh, hang out now if you're if you're horny and all that stuff you can masturbate all day if you want but remove sex from the equation uh, from the equation a little bit or uh, in the early stages and early stages can be anywhere between i don't know a couple of months to maybe like four or five months you don't have to completely eradicate it for a year but don't do it early and uh, i think that's a really good way i mean it, that, that's probably my my best formula for anybody Remove but it. what's the logic oh. behind that with men? If you do sleep with them within less than five months, what are they thinking? Okay, cause so we're just trying to sleep with as many women as possible. We will lie. We will manipulate. We will uh, buy our way through it. We will do whatever it takes to, for, to make it happen. Many of you know, ladies and everyone listening to the show, that uh, there's a ton of ghosting going on after sex. Uh, that's that's very real. That's that's a move we do. It's a move I've done. It's a move every guy <laughs> aspires to yeah. do, if not, uh, are very successful at it. And if you remove sex from the equation, then we start have to we if we, if we we want to hang out with you, that means there's something a little bit more than just the whole physical attraction to it. Like honestly, guys guys don't mean to hang out with girls. We we don't often want to. Um, if we have free time, <laughs> we're gonna hang out with our guy friends. We are going to whatever, play basketball or play video games or do some, you know, game some, do something that makes it fun for us. And generally, hanging out with females isn't that fun unless we want to fuck them, right? <laughs> After that, we really have no business kind of hanging out with you guys. And wow. Okay, that's good truth. If you remove sex from the equation and we hang out with you still, that means we, you're better than our video games. You're better than our basketball. You're better than our drinking and all of the other things that we usually find to be more fun than hanging out with you. So remove sex from that and I'm still hanging out with you. That means I like you more than I like that stuff. And that's a really, really good sign. That's a good wedding vow line, by the way. I like I you more than my video games. I'm getting married <laughs> next month and I'm not going to say that line. <laughs> <laughs> I saw. Sure? Congratulations! You congratulations! Wrote it. Congratulations Thanks. on the engagement. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. Mo, you you talked about ghosting. I want to know: Do you think men ghost more than women, or 
or just being biased here? Absolutely. No, absolutely we do. And remember, it's because what our motive is. Our motive is really to have sex with you. And then um, when that happens, we then have to decide, do we want to do that again? And if we want to do that again, well, then we'd have to hang out a little bit. If we only wanted to do it that one time, then we ghost. Um, I don't think more often than not, you guys are there for the sex. I think you're there for something, sometimes a little bit more than just that. It, it doesn't necessarily mean boyfriend. You guys absolutely are into the FUBU thing too, just like we are. But I don't think it's as um, empty as what we are looking for. We're looking for empty sex. And wow. I think it always makes, it always kind of comes across that you guys would like just maybe a little bit more than that. Most of you girls, right? Mm -hmm. so, I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not, but whatever. I, okay. I, you guys can separate that really well, the sex and the we everything can. else. We, we can. And, yeah. and remember, we masturbate every day and we do it to different material every day. Uh, we have, we have, we're big on variety. And um, that's what makes us, I think, a, a capable of separating it because there's so much variety in our <laughs> daily masturbatorial habits that uh -huh. when we translate it into real life, um, I don't know, it just we feel so, it kind of feels easy in a sense, unfortunately. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so well, we're curious. So what do men really look for? Because he read this article that said men dislike or despise funny women. Or the article also said that men like funny women, but the definition of funny is different. To them, funny women are women who laugh at their jokes. That's funny. I, I don't know. I mean, listen, I can't. we are stimulated usually by the visuals, right, initially. And... And then everything after that is kind of either <laughs> back to the halo halo no. It's it's the other ingredients. And sometimes those ingredients can be more than just the, the attractive quality of a girl, but it's really our, our initial energy, right? It's it's oh, okay, yeah, I find her to be hot. If whatever hot is for you, it's up to you though, right? If you like, if you're a boob guy, you're a boob guy. If you're a ass guy, you're ass guy. If you're a face guy, you're a face guy. If you're a hair, whatever. I, I don't care what, what what makes you think someone is attractive. It's just that's what we lead with so very often. And um everything after that, whether you laugh at my jokes, whether you don't, shit, we don't even have to speak the same language. You could be a Colombian waitress who looks like a porn star. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I can't communicate with you one damn second. That's okay. I don't care. We're still going to get in my room and hopefully my girlfriend doesn't walk in on us. <laughs> oh my God. It's so true because she didn't, she could barely speak English, but my gosh, he told me, he was like, she's an amazing woman. I was like, how is she an amazing woman? She can't even, she can't even I speak got that. Right. She sucks good dick. She's an amazing yeah. woman. Yeah, she's amazing. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> do we want a girl or do we not want a girl to laugh at our jokes? <laughs> Sorry, but how hot do we think she is? Like, we don't care. <laughs> We don't care. Oh, okay. We do have a friend who said this, that he likes funny women women who, well, in the end, he said he likes them to laugh at their at his jokes. But at the end of it, if you look at all the girls he's been with, there's a booty blindness that he has. Yeah, like, yeah that's all bullshit. <laughs> and then, see, that's what I don't want to do because I can sit here and I say all these things about guys and you're going to hate me. Guys are going to hate me. Girls are going to hate me. They're like, ew, you're such a pig. But really, honestly, I'm telling you the truth. And the guy about the saying about the jokes, he's fucking lying to you. Okay, he's fucking <laughs> lying to you. I mean, you look at this class, it's like beauty queen, beauty queen, beauty queen. Your right. type is really funny and smart, and you dated like beauty queen. That's for shit. And go to every politician who's dating a starlet and ask them, so, I mean, do you like her for her political views? Fuck no. Yeah. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Sorry. Okay. But we we're, agree. Talking yeah. a, we're talking a little bit about attraction. And I want to know, since Bumble has been making it big, yep. you know, do you think it's attractive when a girl makes a first move? Does it really work? So, man, how do I change my answer? Because I'm just going to say the same thing over and over here. And I <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Consistent messaging. It's okay. Yeah. Here's yeah. my problem with girls making the first move. First of all, I've never made the first move. Okay, um, I, wow. I'm, I'm a very difficult. I have a very hard time. I, I, I don't know. You said you saw my engagement, right? You, did you? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw the entire thing, but I couldn't even propose to my wife. I am incredibly torpe. I had to get somebody else to do it. I had to get a caller to propose to her while <laughs> I, 
while I put the ring underneath the computer and sniping yeah. through my face. Okay, that's who I am. Um, it's so surprising that you're torpe. You seem super, like such a confident yeah. dude. I know it, it is. It's such a it's such a farce. This is it's all it's bullshit, right? Like I, I I don't drink, I don't party. Everybody thinks I do, right? I don't do any of those things. I never have. Um, I'm I'm a little bit more I think reserved in person. And that carries over with the way I get into relationships. I've never made the first move on a kiss. I've never asked a girl out on a date. Never asked a girl for a phone number, right? Yeah. So if you're saying if a girl makes a first move, what is it like? Well, for a guy like me, it's amazing because that's the only time I actually can finally do something about it, right? Um, yeah. But generally speaking, most guys aren't torpe, so I'm not in the majority. I'm in the minority. And if you make the first move, girls, and here's a big problem. So let me get to the question, right? If you are known to make the first move or if you continue to make the first move, please be careful. Please do your due diligence on the guy that you're making the move on. Please do the background check. Fucking hire a private investigator. I don't <laughs> care. Because the moment a guy and, – and just try to fathom what it's like to have a dick, okay? Since you're 14, okay, 13, 14, and you finally <laughs> ejaculated for the first time, okay? <sighs> And you realized how life changing it is. And I say the same thing. You you started a fire that burns for an eternity. If you <laughs> first move, I am going, I don't care who's in my life. I don't care what you look like. I don't care if you don't speak my language. I don't care. I'm going to take advantage of that because since I was 14 until this very moment, I'm speaking to you guys right now. That's what I've been trying to accomplish since then to get somebody to like me. That's what we want to do. We just want you to like us in that way. So if you make the first move, I will jump on it. And that means you don't know if I like you or not. I'm just so desperate and so starving for the attention that I've been trying to get since I was 14. Dangerous. That's so yet, interesting. Am I, am, I, am I articulating this clearly or yeah. is Kind of confusing because it's I mean, some yeah. deep psychology, basically. Yeah, <laughs> our minds are just a little bit blown. Yeah. My whole yeah. life, I just want girls to like me. That's every boy, okay? Mm. Every boy. Now, fine. You maybe you'll get a Gerald Anderson or a fucking whatever super handsome guy who can who who has experience in rejecting girls. But the average guy don't look like that. And our since we were young, we've just wanted girls to like us. So if you do the easy part or the hard part and make it easy for us. We're too excited to say no. And that's the dangerous part. You're going to get guys who are going to play with that. Yeah. And, you can't say no. And, and, and as much as I want women to be empowered and as, I'm, as much as I want you guys to be equal and as much as I want you to go out and get what you want, just like the guys get what they want, understand what you want is a worse species than what we want. We're <laughs> <Yeah>. bad species. <laughs> <laughs> Parang ayoko na. Magmamadre na lang ako. I know, right? <laughs> you want to say same-sex relations. That, that's why, like, the, the like if, you know, lesbians or girl-on-girl girl or bisexuals, if you're a girl, I, if I were a girl, I have two girls. I want them to just be in relationship with girls. <laughs> because <laughs> oh, wow. you're attracted to a bad species. Uh -huh. <laughs> I've thought of that before. I was like, if only I liked women, life would be so much easier. <laughs> I yes. can't. I can't. They're emotional. I know, but I can't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so that, that's the thing. But again, please, let, let me be clear. If you're a girl and you want to have sex and you want to have casual sex and you want to make the first move and you don't care if the guy disappears, then welcome. Welcome to our world. It's awesome. <laughs> but if you're looking for something more, and if you like a guy and you want to make the first move, you gotta be careful. You gotta get your testimonials. You gotta make sure that you've 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 vetted this dude. And that means interviewing everybody in his life, dissecting what his family is like, dissecting what his parents are like, dissecting what their marriage is like before you even fuck around. With, I just with, had this visualization of you being like meet the fuckers when your kids actually start dating, yeah. and like you've got the lie detector. <laughs> they have yeah. to get on your show. Would that and... be you? Would you be Robert De Niro just going like that? I, I would because I know I would because I mean I, I listen. I've done I've done my podcast for ten years. I don't know if you've ever heard it, but if you ever mm -hmm. listen to my show as a listener, you would really think twice about getting into a relationship. It is really an eye opening about how just bad and maybe not maybe a relationship is not for humans 
you know. Why um, are you in one though? What? Why are you in one? Oh there no, no, no. Be- I'm talking about the math. Like there, okay. I consider myself somewhat of an exception to the rule, somewhat. And I think a lot of us are, but that's after six really bad ones too, though, you know? Mm-hmm. Six one of them that would go, oh, maybe I shouldn't be in a relationship. So it's it's not not relationships aren't a death sentence, mm-hmm. but understand you are the chances of you going through life unhurt or unbroken or sorry, Vea, to brick, you know, pull the scab, but walking into a room with your boyfriend, <laughs> with another woman. I recommend that, it for everyone that wants to learn. <laughs> that is going to happen. Okay. That is going to happen to all of you. And if you're not equipped emotionally to deal with that, then yeah, mm-hmm. you know what? Maybe you shouldn't because it's nasty. It's nasty, yeah. nasty, nasty. My gosh, men. Okay. So, okay. Well, let's talk about, a bit about the paradox of choice. They're, they're oh. crazy bitches too. Okay. Just, I mean, I don't want to oh, say. That's true. Yes. I mean, we've all had our crazy <laughs> moments yeah, also. Yeah. Like yeah, stalking yeah, just, a little bit too much. Things like that. No, okay. I'll take that. I'll take that over some of the crap that we do. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. Sorry. So, okay. Let's talk about the paradox of choice. Do you think that we just have a buffet now? That's why it's so hard for us to settle down. Because we're so spoiled for choice. Sure. Yeah, I, I think I think the world is a smaller world, and um, that's why I would say cheating more prevalent now than ever. Even though we understand the emotional side of it, um, the bad with the world is big about mental health, and I think the more woke we get, the maybe that would help to combat the the temptation of a smaller world. Maybe back in the day, we wouldn't care too much about other people's feelings. Hence, we can just cheat relentlessly like like old school Filipino men have. Mm. Right? Um, but it, 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 it's hard because like, I think the more in tune we are with caring about people's feelings, the less we're going to cheat. But the more access we have to human beings, the more likely we are going to cheat. So I'm not sure if the numbers will really change from those shitty titos we had or maybe even your own fathers or lolos or whatever that were in, like sh- fucking womanizers, right? Um, oh God, how do I say this? Um... I think w- because we are no longer dating the people in our neighborhood, in our province, in our barangay, in our town, it's, it can get really messy. I'm hoping for all of us in the future, we'll realize how much it hurts and we're all going to feel that pain that we wouldn't want to give that to somebody else. That's yeah. kind of a mushy, shitty answer, but I think that's my hope that hmm. we all know, even men and women, what it's like to be cheated on to be cheated on it sucks it can really ruin your fucking year or two years or three years of life and then you'll stop because you understand i think back in the day maybe so many of those older filipino men cheated because the wives were so loyal well girls time to fight back your fucking boyfriend cheats on you we'll fuck his best friend and let's see let's see how let's see how uh, it's like a revenge cycle yeah. just go on and go on it continues you can you guys can change the future by by hurting them back in, in the yeah pre- my yeah. Lola's like the king of like if you would um describe like the old school womanizer, he is king. We have this thing we call him his scholars. Cause at the, in a in a month, not even a month, in a lifetime, every day of his life, he has always like around ten. And he sends them, do you know those mga old school like um university uh, like my informatics SDI yeah. so, may wing ka dun eh. perfect mga scholars mo yeah. it's like you know what like, never 80s will never give up more power. <laughs> Yes, men have it lucky. You start 13 and then you can last until like 90. I mean, I know someone 70 years old had like twins. So I I, 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 I hear the rumor like Juan Ponce and Rila's like girlfriend is like in her 30s or some shit. The fucker's on a treadmill just trying to stay alive just so he could bang this girl. I mean, I don't know if you could tell them or anything. I don't know if that's true, but those are the uh, those are the stories, right? You get from heard- uh, fellow senators. Yeah, the worst things about about the old school men is like they have heard this uh, firsthand. The Marin Silang they're like eighties, right? Seventies, whatever. Pero they would never have a mistress na above thirty. <laughs> Again, <laughs> I, will, I mean like a broken record. We're really a bad species. And wow, okay. Uh, hopefully the new group uh can help change that. You know. Mm-hmm. Fingers. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
unlike men, we believe in happily ever after. Or there is this really misconstrued idea of like this whole idea of a Disney princess that I believe really messed us up. And this is what I'm curious about, Mo, because when men chase women they like, but when a woman starts liking them back, the man runs away. What are your thoughts on this like phenomenon? Like you say that, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's a phenomenon. I, I don't I don't know if it holds true anymore that men like to chase women. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I think we change, right? We change in our mindset. Maybe your Lolo, uh, Shari, yeah. liked that. Maybe women chasing women, we being a womanizer is what made him, what defined him, defined him as a man, right? As many mm-hmm. of those guys did. Um I don't know. I, I, I don't think guys run. I, I'm going to go back to what I said a few minutes ago. I don't think guys run when a girl likes them. I think we take advantage of the moment. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I'm going to disagree with that rather massively. Uh, yeah, no, sorry. How I, about um, hot and cold men? This is Expound. A, how do I explain? There are like all in. There are men that, you know, they just shower you compliments and... They just want to fuck you. Okay, and then okay, okay. okay. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm not gonna off. disagree anymore. Yeah, How do you think it's going with men right now? Because of like a lot of, I, I think the states is better for this, but like or other places. But in the Philippines, some people don't get to see each other. I, I don't know if people are doing it secretly. Do you think men are really struggling with the fact that they can't sleep with as many women as they can? Uh, I think they've slowed down. I don't think. Uh, I don't think they've stopped. Again, uh, this is. The, the only the only evidence I have are the people that call the show, and okay. um, I'll tell you, maybe I've seen five percent, ten percent less sex, uh, but it seems like these people are banging, and uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no issue there. They'll fuck a fur, they'll fuck a frontliner today, and wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, in Australia there were like security guards known. I don't know that. Right. <laughs> the risk, whatever. Right. Listen, I'm sorry to keep. I'm not plugging my podcast here. I'm just giving you. Do it all the way. But, but yeah. I, there's a girl who called the show, and the bad. I get a lot of callers from the Middle East, and they're in countries where premarital sex it's COVID all day. <laughs> it's COVID every day when it comes to that stuff in those countries. Yeah. Um, Bahrain, Saudi, you know. Wow. These, yeah. these, are, these are places where you cannot be in a in in a in a room with the opposite sex. And this girl called me and, you know, she said, man, I was fucking this guy and his penis was so big that it really kind of tore her up rather <laughs> viciously. And she was bleeding so profusely that she couldn't find the hospital that would take her because mm-hmm. um, they just don't. And she would, you know, and she could get, she could get thrown in jail for it, all that stuff. And I'm like, hold on, I have a question. Knowing all that, why are you still fucking like, why would you still want to have sex then? Like, cause you put your, you put your freedom on the line. Like you're talking yeah. to him just to mm-hmm. have sex. And they're like, well, I mean, I needed it. I wanted it. I'm like, okay. Yeah. See, so COVID no. <laughs> Won't stop people. Wait, boys and girls. Okay, they'll find a way. They'll, they'll Wait. Find- so what happened to her vagina? Did she, she was going to find a female doctor. I am pretty sure it's Bahrain. She was able to find a female doctor who, uh, covertly took her in, told her not to say a word, and treated her for her injuries. She went to eight hospitals before she found somebody she could finally kind of tell to. And she said she was already losing kind of consciousness because of the blood loss. And it was nasty, but a reality about of that place, you know, in, in the world. Yeah. And um, it doesn't stop people from doing it. I mean, I get gay guys from the Middle East calling me all the time. I'm like, you will go to jail. And like, yeah, I know, but fuck it. Mm. And I'm like, okay, all right. Amazing. Yep. People will do to move mountains. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, we're animals. Right? This, yeah. this is how animals behave. This is how animals, all animals behave. From your ant to your lion. It's going to places, urinating on areas to let you know that this is mine. Uh, mm. The lioness wants to bang the healthiest looking male. She'll allow them to fight to the death for it. And then she'll fuck him. And then he'll eat their cubs you know like just understand how animals behave that's how we behave we're just not as ruthless mm. but even the cutest of the cute to do that <laughs> like, right 
So know, we the, are very sexually motivated motivated people. Or food, food is just like every other animal. The the beautiful oh, yeah. bird whose feathers are electric blue and is mm-hmm. doing all this mating call. If another boy gets in there, they're fighting for what? Ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone did tell me that. Like, if you can sell something around sex and food, that's it. Like, that's yeah. all you need to think about. True. Going back to that. Every mm. animal, every single one. The cutest thing <laughs> to yes. I mean, the- rabbits, for cry out loud. Rabbits, exactly. Yeah. If you guys have dogs, you try to separate them when one's in heat. Yeah, it's good luck. Just- yeah, so, right? Why are we shocked then? I mean, why? What is this whole... Well, men chase women they like, and and women chase men, and they get no. no. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Okay. I guess that's true. Okay. So another feeling of us women. Do you yeah. think we're obsessed with defining the relationships to the point that we set ultimatums? Do you sure. think we should push for this, Absolutely. or should we just stop? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Because I don't want you guys to waste time. Like I don't want it, uh, girls. Listen to me. If your boyfriend does not want to validate the relationship or put a title that you so want, or guys, same thing, right? But uh, I mean, we're, we're talking about ladies here predominantly. But mm. if they don't want to validate, if they don't want to put a title, if they're uncomfortable, get out. Because I don't want you to wait. I mean, <laughs> man, time goes by so fast. This is where I look. I sound like Tito Mo. Uh, your the time goes by so fast. And if you're in, say, you're 28. 30, 31, Bay. I don't know if you guys are, or Shari, I don't know if you guys have um, boyfriends, but. No. Uh, no. It, 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 no. Thirsty and 30. If we do <laughs> the prime math, right? The prime math, meaning your, your physical prime, your athletic prime, your hottest prime, whatever, your earning potential, all that. Those are those years. And if you're going to waste it with somebody who doesn't want to give you what you want, please leave immediately don't wait don't see maybe he'll change his mind don't get out because those are years those are your best years okay so if you're pushing for definition get your definition and if he's not going to give it kick his ass out please please Mm -hmm. please listen listen ladies he's gonna practice this (laughs) but you know it's funny women ask us for advice and then they i don't think they listen because you don't hear from them from a while for a while and then a month they come back and they go i was like how are you the like same situation i'm like well you didn't listen yung favorite ko yung hey mo been listening to your show for since like you uh i grew up listening to you you're the um you're the you've guided me through so many things and i'm like oh fuck okay so what's the problem <laughs> problem oh, well, you know i've got six girlfriends right now and um yeah I'm, i just impregnated my girlfriend's mom and i'm like wait i, I thought you were listening to me <laughs> I'm like, well, I guided you through life bullshit they they use it to validate bad habits i think like i would i think i think it's yeah they go like oh other men do it in the man pala so it's fine I think that could be like a- it breaks my heart. Oh. When people tell me, "Oh man, I've listened to you every day, Grave. You know, I you've you've got me through the tough times." And then I go, oh, "Okay, here we go. What's your problem? What do you do?" Oh, you know, I just uh, <laughs> I just fucked my way through my, to to a promotion. How say you? And I'm like, "Oh my god." <laughs> You weren't listening. I've created <laughs> that word worst it. human beings. <laughs> do you shake them like Anuba, or you're like, "No, oh, I just oh, go, and I go. If you were listening to me, why are you here?" Like, if you want to listen to me, why are we talking? Because it's like a doctor. It's like you love your doctor, but you never want to see him. Yeah, mm, correct. I, I, I appreciate that you guys listen, but I don't want you to call. That's call good. Yeah. <laughs> right? hmm. Call if you just came across me today. Don't give me the whole I've been listening for 15 years and then tell me how awful of a human being you are. I feel like a failure. Yeah. <laughs> with, with your callers, Mo, I'm sure you get a lot of people that are indecisive. Sure. You know, they when they're talking, they're like, you don't really know where they want to stand with their current situation or their love problem. But do you think with men, they're more non-committal than women, or it can go both ways? Uh, I, well, it's, it could go both ways, but we're talking about more, right? More non. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. The answer is absolutely. Um, it, it's the. Uh, I, I think it's a part of it is variety, as as we've talked about uh, mm. already now here. Um, just think about the f- psychology of a bachelor's party, right? I've got a bachelor's party. I mean, what, what are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to have strippers. Okay, why? Mm. Well, because 
this is the last day of my life. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> well, if you think about it that way, then hell yeah. Why are you getting married? Right. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's just awkward. And by the way, bachelor parties, ladies, please don't allow your boyfriends to have bachelor parties. Please, please. I love them. I love seeing, I used to host them because in my restaurant, they had a lot of like, it was a Mexican bar. So there was a lot of, uh, we had a lot of Latina waitresses and I guess that is. And one time we had 60 policemen, um, bachelor party, party and the lap dancer, my gosh, she made a killing. It was like 50 bucks. Yeah. Okay. Sure. But, but we're, 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 we were, early, we started the show trying to define cheating. The fuck yeah. is that? It's a bachelor's party. You're like, you're, you're, <laughs> It's like a hall pass, isn't it? I mean, I, so don't allow, don't allow for yeah, future. That's, yeah, that's stupid. If if you subscribe to bachelor parties, both females allowing and males doing it, the, you have no business getting married. Absolutely. Really? Not. I want to have a nice bachelorette party with that's fucking like, with Magic Mike there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. We you were should... looking. We were looking for a batch, uh, a stripper for my friend, right? So we were like, we found this nice white man over here, and I was like, no, I want the BBC for my bachelorette party. But <laughs> why, Sherry? Why? 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 Help me understand I, this. A curiosity. No, I want to see. Then, then you can do that on your own when you're single. Why? Why? Why get a girl who's taken, who's in a relationship? Let's not use the word taken, right? Because it's twenty something. Why, why get a girl who is in a relationship and then just dangle Wang in her face on the night before she's supposed to like be the most loving and loyal day of you her? You know why? Because I have a theory that we are super different. Like if you, if you and I were together, I went to a strip club and I'm like, I'm having fun laughing at the boys. You go to a strip club, you get a boner. It's not that sexual to us women, or at least to me, it's not. It's more fun. Okay, that, that's, that's what a con person would tell me to make a boner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's that one word? The fucking the baba when it's <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Why? Just you think about it as Lubok. I think about it as. I mean, that's both. Just put yourself on a pedestal. Yeah. Never know when I'm gonna turn on some of the laughing. Some of the I was terrified. I just uh, that. That's again. Bea, I know I am really bullying. Go for it. Just rub, rub the salt. My boyfriend <laughs> said when she walked in on the girl in the bed, well, I, was, I mean, you look at it as cheating. I look at it as well. Am I supposed to say no to her? Yeah, it's a milestone. <laughs> so I'm the sketchy one. Okay, fine. Point no, it, I think it's just obvious. Right? It's obvious. You're supposed to be getting married. You're supposed to, supposed to be like the, the most love you've felt in your whole entire life. Yeah. <laughs> This is going to define your, you're going to celebrate this. Oh, I'm going to celebrate it first, though, with fucking BBC in my throat. I mean, come on. <laughs> no, no, man. And your face lying in front. Not in my throat. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. It could just be inches yeah. away. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the shoot. The yeah. shoot long with that. I'm hitting you in the nose. <laughs> oh, okay. God. So no. we kind of touched a bit on infidelity. Um, yeah. like, I guess just a straight question is, do you think, it's Philippine culture that we have so much cheaters here, or is it just a guy being a guy? Um, both. I think. I think uh, culturally, we are just, you know, we're not good men. We have never, we haven't really been good men for a while. Um, and then, of course, there's the physiological, which is men have testosterone. Testosterone equates to again aggression, high sex drive. Uh, you see this with girls who have high testosterone levels. They tend to have lower voices, kind of like we do. They, have to, they tend to have high sex drives like we do. They tend to have hairier oh. or arms or whatever like we do. Um, anybody in a transitional phase as well that inject mm. testosterone or on the flip side, estrogen, you'll see sex drive go down on that end, sex drive go up, increasing tenfold on the receiving end. So there's a physiological, obviously scientific um, reason behind it. And then the cultural is just, it's what makes us be able to control the physiological. So um, how I grew up, what I witnessed, where I'm from helps me control or not act upon the, the the part of my body or what's inside my body that tells me fuck every animal you can. Mm. It, it, sorry if that doesn't make sense, but that, that that's my answer. Gets more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, it makes sense because there's a lot of bodies. Like we don't really study our bodies enough, or like try to explain that that has something to do with how we act. 
like whether you yeah. so then, try yeah. not yeah, try not ejaculating for a week any boy listening to the show uh god will do it for you in the form of a wet dream mm. in you know just kind of another way it, it, it'll happen another way your body is telling you it has to do it it is built that way unfortunately um and it is your own personal code your own personal moral code how good of a person you are will decide what you do with that energy Am I you think it's a, it's a yeah. forgivable offense no it's not a forgivable offense because mm -hmm. you should be able to control it like we control me killing you me stealing from mm -hmm. you me yeah seeing you eat and I'll just take the food off of your plate like any other animal would. Again, let's go back to watching Animal Planet. If a fucking hyena is eating something, another hyena has no problem going over there and ripping it from his face and kicking his ass for it. We don't do that as humans, but it we do too, right? I mean, the criminals do. So your, your upbringing, your culture, everything about you is what stops you from behaving the way we're built to behave. Mm. Okay, I'm having a real wake up call at the moment. Really, this is good. It's only um, three. If you don't agree with any of this, then it's not really a wake up call. But so. Uh, no, I think it's honest to just think that way because, like, sometimes we thread around eggshells and stuff, and why not? Yes, yeah, so <laughs> we lead with the heart and we rom com it, as you guys said. But I think oh, I think if yeah. you change the channel from or change it from Netflix to Animal Planet, you'll understand a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my best dating advice from this show is watch Animal Planet. That's yeah, yeah. Watch, and you'll realize what's going on. Right. Stop watching documentaries or reading books. Just watch. Animal Planet. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and then, then just pick out which one your boyfriend is from the animals that you. See. Yes, go on a safari and decide yeah. which animal you want to be. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah. Dark week. Oh, yeah, that's my boyfriend right there. Like, okay, watch him behave, and then you'll know what's going to happen to you. <laughs> Oh, oh yes, a lot of men will not want to listen to this. Hey, you know, can I can I grow bash now? Because I've been bashing. Yes, before. sure. Go ahead. You go. fuckers hate each other. You guys hate each other all the time. All <laughs> the time. We don't. You know, if we go to a party and I, this pink shirt that I'm wearing, if I see another guy wearing the same exact shirt, I'd high five him and go, "Brilliant minds think alike." About it. Yeah, you know that guy. If Bea, if if Shari was wearing that at an outfit, <laughs> no, 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 no. actually, yes, <laughs> it's true. I why is that? Claws out, you know. Animal planet. No, actually, watch it. They fucking hate each other too, right? Um, yeah. and, and then if you ever think about why girls sleep with married men, you're like, what are, what are fucking are these girls oh, fucking these yeah. married, right? Well, guess what? Animal planet. When <laughs> When the when the the girl validates to other women that her boyfriend or husband is worth it, mm -hmm. it is it's an attractive quality to you girls. So uh, again, help me if I'm not articulating this correctly. Boys are boys, but if another girl likes that boy, there's something about that boy, and I want to find out what the fuck it is. And I am gonna go find out what it is, and I'm gonna head over there and find out what it is. And that's how mm -hmm. it, you guys end up. So, of course, you mix that with our manipulative ways. And you have a you have a recipe for disaster. So. A lot of the excuses that I've heard about men, uh, women sleeping with married men, is like I didn't know. I find I found out three months in, I was in love already. I was like, yeah, right. You yeah, I love I love I love you brought this up. So here's my: mm -hmm. thing. if a girl doesn't know, she has to get a pass. And and is that true though? Absolutely. Yes. And, absolutely. Absolutely. Hundred percent. If if that Colombian girl in the bed did not know about you, Bea, you shouldn't even. I'm her employer. I pay her every week. Yes. <laughs> that was really bad. Okay, that was really bad. <laughs> but but if you didn't know, please please try your best not to get mad at. Uh, not you know not to get mad. Yeah, at. but I don't know. I just think it's impossible now. I mean, you have social media. You know everything about everybody. So you were in the past before in the snail mail petang the Of course, you wouldn't know that this guy yeah, is married. Maybe maybe if. I don't know. We're yeah, sure, fine. Social media, but one night stands, all that stuff. I mean, if you didn't know, you didn't know. Okay, uh, mm. if you did know, then you're Julia Breton. So whatever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go after her, right? Mm. Yeah. But it's funny how if this does happen, the woman would go after the girl, not the man. Really, so, it goes back to you girls hating each other. Yeah. No, I'm a strong believer. That, believer that it's your fault. You're the married one. Why am I going to be mad at that woman? Is she the yeah. one taken? No, it's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, and, and I just want to kind of 
push that to everybody, please. It's not the girl's fault if she didn't know. Mm. We're touching a little bit on broken marriages and relationships, Mo, mm. and I want to know what you think about a lot of really silently broken relationships and marriages in the Philippines. Why are there so many? And do you think there's going to be a revolution about that and be like, okay, enough, <laughs> enough of this? I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, mm-hmm. We can speculate and say, well, maybe because there's no divorce law. And if there's no divorce mm-hmm. law, then, well, you know, you're stuck with them. And if you're stuck with them, well, fuck. I mean, I can't be miserable my whole life. I have to do something nice. Maybe it's we tend to get married rather early. And maybe we tend to... I don't know if this happens as often as it used to, but if you guys have sex and sex equals people, then uh, you get pregnant and then you get forced to be married. Like, there's a lot of that kind of shit where, like, I wish I wish we had a law where I interview every single person who's dating their boyfriend or girlfriend when they were a teenager. You're, you're mandated to break up. You know, <laughs> we do this thing where we we get together when we're 15 and then yeah. 16, 17 by the time we're 21 we're 4 years into a relationship and we think the next thing to do is get married because that's the progression of every relationship 3 to 4 years get engaged but you're only 22 you're only 23 you get together you realize your change you change as a human being you you change as an adult so dramatically mm-hmm. in in a short amount of years during your 20s and your 30s that i think that's it i think we 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 marry early we don't have a law that allows us to break up. We have sex, get pregnant. We don't use condoms. And then we have children. And then we think we should get married and all of those things. Um, I'm going to say something really cruel, but it's, it's, it's kind of, it's just the way I think. And you never really want to say it because it's wrong, but shit, right? Hashtag real talk. Mm. I, I, as much as possible, will stay away from dating somebody who comes from a broken home. And that's something I will instill on my children as much as possible. When I said earlier, I want you to interview or investigate or vet their parents and their relationships, that's what I'm focusing on. Mm -hmm. Is it a broken home? Whether they're broken and still together or separated, if the answer is yes, get out. And it's, it's, it's a rule that I live by because And I'm not saying it's all-encompassing, right? Obviously, there are exceptions to the rule. Obviously, there are great marriages of people whose parents were from, you know, they're from broken homes. I get it. I understand that. But I think the majority of bad relationships is because they have bad parents. And, you know, it's a circle of life thing. So it's very easy to go, oh, you behave like your mother, you behave like your father. That that happens so often that before I get into a serious relationship, I want to know what their parents are like. And I, and I encourage you guys to do that as well. Now, it doesn't mean you have to not be with them because they come from a broken home, but I'm telling you that's how I, I don't want to deal with the headache because it will raise its ugly head some point in this relationship. Yeah, yeah, wow. Okay, actually, I'm going to share a really um, interesting story. I dated someone who told me that he had um, some <laughs> situation of incest yeah. in the beginning and you know he was so sorry about it. And I still went with it. And I was like, now that I think about it, that's a major red flag in a normal sense. But now that you explained it, I was like, okay, this is why I should have stayed away from that person. Because there is some brokenness in that. Incest. It rears its ugly head at some point. It will. Okay? And, and if, you, if, you don't, if you don't have the patience for it, then don't do it. Yeah. But if you get into it, understand it's good, it can get volatile. And it sucks because it's not fair. It's not fair for the people who had a good life, even though they came from a broken home. It's not fair mm-hmm. for them because you're prejudging that they're going to go batshit crazy on you one day. No, it's just the numbers. Okay, The math, yeah. to me, the math has always equated bad upbringing, bad relationship. Always yeah. for me. Mm-hmm. So, I'm now going to be asking people for their family tree. No, fuck, you should. <laughs> you really, really should. And at 30, and if, yeah, you should. And yeah, exactly, and if, 30, absolutely. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. If you watch yeah. documentaries about serial killers, <laughs> bad upbringing, all yeah. of them. Yeah, and, and wow. it's, because you know, it's funny you say that because here in the US, especially like on Netflix, and you guys know this, mm-hmm. is like serial killer fucking documentaries, right? And then if you if you come across their story, what they were like as children, and they were tortured, they were abused, I do sympathize for them. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, maybe I could say that because you haven't killed my family, and if you killed my family, <laughs> I'm not going to sympathize. But 
But every time I see a heinous criminal on television doing something bad, I go, shit, I wish, I hope that he wasn't tortured as a child. Because mm. it, then life really sucks for this person. Yeah. From the yeah. beginning all the way to the end. It's just been so awful. Um, yeah, so so just kind of, that, that that's my mindset. I, I I need to know the upbringing. I need to know what it's like. No matter how hot you are, I need to know what it's like. <laughs> I never thought of that. It's really just like... Yeah. Yeah. It's wrong to say though, and, and I'm I'm embarrassed to say it. It's, it's rather something I'd rather have kept. You know, you want to keep to yourself, but mm. you know. But they always say this in Filipino families, like just understand um, their family. Like sometimes that's why they date people that their family already know, because then you know. Even Indian matchmaking, that's the way it works, right? Yeah. 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 I think it's the difference here in the Philippines. The motivation is just the family wealthy, not really like how good the relationship of the parents are. I guess it just mm. would depend on what you're looking for. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Listen to so, my podcast. You'll see. Uh, my first question to every damaged, especially girl, is, "Where's your dad?" And you'll you'll hear it all the time. He's not here. He's not anymore. Left us. Okay. Yeah. That's why. That's why I know why you're here. Oh wow. Okay. Say, Where's your dad? And by the way, look, I always <laughs> those fucking men, right? Bad species. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so we talked about like how to vouch for a partner, right? What about us? How do we how do we make sure that we're like wife material also? What if we're the sketchy ones? What makes a woman a high value woman? That's really a question. that question. That's really good. Like what can we do? Because yeah. I, mm. <laughs> we don't want to stop hating on men. Do we got to improve as well? Like, yeah, because we we're Bay and I were rewatching our show, and we were like, we were dicks. And then, I mean, the past few months, we were like, oh my gosh, we are much nicer people. So, the what can we do to improve? What? That's a fuck. I never get this question. I always get questions like, what do I expect my boyfriend to be better? How do you get better? Um, it, you know, you know, same thing. Uh, this is where I'm going to go the equality route. Just, just, uh, you know, the, what you want from us, do it as well. If you what you want from us is not to mess around, not to lie, not to um, I don't know. Oh, here, oh, here's one. Here's oh my god, I can't believe I forgot this. Never drink with a boy. Never get drunk with a boy that's not your boyfriend. Why? Uh, okay, okay, with others. Okay. Yeah. Never get drunk with a guy who's not your boyfriend. Ever, ever, ever. I don't care if it's your cousin. I don't care if it's your friend since kinder. Don't ever get drunk with a boy in the vicinity. Ever, okay. Ah. Right. I've De never heard that before. Oh, why? Because we will take advantage any way we can. Do not do it. Don't ever do it, please. Especially if you're in a relationship, don't do it. Mm. Yeah. This makes so much sense because I was once in a trip recently. Yeah, and I had a bit of alcohol, yeah. and there was a person around that that was a married man, and like he just was taking advantage of a situation, and I was I would never, but at the same time, you would never you put, consciously, but but you put yourself in that position basically I'm by sorry. drinking and being loose and you know easygoing when there is a person there without his wife, right? Yeah, so, yeah, and and as much as it may come across as I I, I don't think it come across as victim blaming. It doesn't because, yeah. but it, there is, you know there are hints of it. Like, well, yeah. I should be able to get drunk. Well, well, he should be able to control himself. Yeah, but we're bad species, <laughs> so there, we we can shoulda coulda woulda our way through this. It doesn't change that your inhibitions are there and you have a predator. Yeah. On the, on the, yeah. Okay, yeah. as close as we are to Animal Planet and this being a production of National Geographic, um, I do want to know how do you get as close to happily ever after? You're going to get married. I just wonder like, what your thoughts are about that and is it possible? Um, it's hard to get to happily ever after. Um, let's see, how do you do it? I, I think, I think, um, you know, I, I, I've always been like, I, I, I like, oh, it's just stupid. Uh, it's obvious. I like attractive people, but <laughs> I've always kind of led with that. Like, I just want to have an attractive, I want to have an attractive partner. And it, it, I don't care about, again, I don't care about this. I don't care about that. Just as long as they're attractive. Right. And it, honestly, if you lead with that, you're screwed look for the, the happily ever after you're fucked. Okay. Yeah. Um, you you really you really got to uh 
to look at the qualities that make you make your in your household your environment as harmonious as possible whatever those qualities are go after it that's why live in live in don't marry somebody you've been together when you were a kid be in 10 relationships before you finally settle down don't get married before you're 30 like there's all of these things because i want you to be the most mature adult you can fucking be before you say yes and i want you to have been through battles and battles and battles to know what crazy looks like to know what abusive looks like to know what all of those things and i don't want you to be abused but at some point in your life you're gonna you're gonna get it verbally emotionally psychologically and god forbid physically you're going to get it it is going to happen and un until you've tasted some kind of conflict please don't forever somebody um understand what your boyfriend and your girl or your boyfriend how what does conflict resolution look like in your relationship before you get married how does my boyfriend react to conflict whether it's conflict initiated by myself or conflict initiated by the security guard at the subdivision how does he behave in response to conflict what is his resolution and what's our resolution in the face of conflict if it's ugly please get out please i don't give a fuck how many years you guys have been together and i don't want to hear the line seven years natin. please do not or else you will never sniff smell taste or swim in a pool called happily ever after ever i, I should have spoken to you when i was 20 years old record. <laughs> conflict resolution number one thing and you're not yeah. going to be good at it until you've been through some battles and you've been through some experience do not get married to your first boyfriend girlfriend do not get married in your early 20s do not do it conflict resolution not mature enough for you to pull that off mm. conflict yeah. resolution. Okay, solid advice okay so mo we are down towards the end of our interview right but we want to end with a couple of cheesy questions for you if you don't mind <laughs> okay so first <laughs> What's your advice to the 18 year old Mohan about love? I think I just said it. Please don't, please don't, please don't lead with, oh my gosh, she's hot enough. Like, I, 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 it, when I was 18, or even so, more maybe in my 20s, I broke up with good girlfriends just because the next one was a little bit prettier. Just a little bit. I mean, honestly, it was a little bit. Like, my girlfriend in my 20s, she was stunning, stunning. It was so beautiful and just the nicest person, you know, and good family. Just, nice hmm. and then there was an ex-girl who's just a little bit prettier than her and, like, <laughs> and what a nightmare that relationship was just because of that i would tell wow. 18 year old one dude that girl that you dumped for that girl oh my god not fine fine she wasn't she was 0 0.005 not as attractive as the other one it was really negligible right and you went for that for that reason alone you fucking idiot you know oh, that's what we we've been reading about this in that book again how to not die alone and one of the personalities of a person is a maximizer they would never leave the what he calls it like unturned like it has to always be one inch better and it's you're always a look model right i mean honestly <laughs> you can have the 2020 uh, yeah, 2020 tesla and the 2021 comes out it's the same fucking car it's the same fucking body it's the same everything it's just that light bulb maybe is a little bit more whatever. And people want it. People want it because of the year on the birth certificate of your vehicle. It's say 2020 versus 2020. It's the same fucking car. And people <laughs> want it because you that's what we're thought to do when you're stupid and young. And that and then you know, you 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 mimic that maybe in your relationships. Mm. So mm. it's weird because I'm telling you, break up, break up, break up when you're young, right? Break up, break up, keep breaking him. But what I'm saying is don't lead. Don't lead with, hey, I'm going to get out of this relationship because that girl's 0.5% better looking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honest response, you know? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, you've been in a lot of relationships. When was the first time you felt loved? Um, I, I think all of them. I, I think, you know, in every relationship, I've felt loved. Um, I think there's a difference between, say, being in a casual relationship and not feeling love and then every like real relationship i don't know i've, I've always felt is that that question well, how old was i is that what you were doing 
Yeah, uh, like that moment. You're like, oh, you know, past like oh, 13 yeah. where you... Or 15. <laughs> like, you know, when you first get in a relationship, you kind of know what it's like, you know? Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, it's just... Yeah. No. And our, our last question and probably the cheesiest. I'll the, go ahead. The feeling hasn't changed much. It doesn't, it doesn't oh. change much when you're 43 to when you're 15. Wait, what did you do in your current relationship, both of you, that make you feel kilig? I'm curious about this. Um, hmm. We're a gift-giving couple. Uh, that's kind of, yeah, I don't know if you guys subscribe to the love languages. Some people do, some people don't. I'm, I'm, we do. Yeah, I, I do to a certain extent, but I don't think, of course, it's like, it, it's absolute, right? I think it's, again, very fluid and all that. But mm -hmm. uh, our love language is that. So when I get kind of a gift that I really kind of like, and I know that she's researched and whatnot, I, I get, you know, it's killing for me. Um, I'm a person, I'm a physical touch guy too. Like if you just hold my hand or put your, you know, head on my shoulder for sitting down, my wife does that a lot. I feel killing still. You know. But again, my wife is, <laughs> sorry, I sound like a dick, right? But my wife is much more attractive than I am. So to, <laughs> she is hot. Yeah, she is. Yeah, hot. yeah she yeah, is. Just to have, a, 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 you know, her being as attractive as she and she's 30 well she's 38 39 i believe this year and she still looks yeah. incredible and and I, I don't mean that as a still like some kind of chauvinistic pig or anything when i say still because <laughs> i mean we're always i think I'm, I'm always going to say she's attractive even in her 80s but in terms of defying age as they say she's done an incredible job um and 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 because of that sometimes when i see her i feel like i'm 15 <laughs> because she's just so pretty you know it's, it's that's cute. like I feel like I'm in high school still, you know, for, for that. Not saying that if she wasn't, but you get what I mean, you know, right? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Okay, so the last and the cheesiest and our favorite question What is love? God, who can answer that? Uh, what is love? That is not the cheesiest, it might be the hardest. We got a lot of fairly good answers, actually. So, can you throw some out and I just kind of counterpunch those? Oh, I, my favorite was Margie Holmes. Remember yeah. when she said like, immature love says, I love you. I need you. That's why I love you. Mature love says, I love you. That's why I need you. My favorite is her husband who said like, steak every day is love. Oh yeah. That's yes. a good one too. Yes. <laughs> I, I love my children. I love them Ooh. intensely, 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 intensely. So when I look at them, I know what love is. Um, because I, 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 I kept put into words. Uh, I think there was a song by, um, do you know the song, do you know the band Live? You might be too young to know them. They, they sang a song called Lightning Crashes, which is probably their most famous song. Do, do you know? Oh. You know, okay, mm -hmm. you know that? Gosh. Um, they're really, really popular. Uh, the, Lightning Crashes is their most famous song, but they have a song called Heaven. And lyrically, I think there's something there. Sorry, I'm going to try to look it up here. Heaven live lyrics real quick. Bear with me. Sorry. I know this yeah, is no. No, 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 go ahead. ahead. But there's a line here, I think, that... Um... Okay, so here, it, kind of what I was talking about. Uh, I don't need no one to tell me about heaven. I look at my daughter and I believe. Um, I don't need proof when it comes to whether there's a God, right? Because I can look at the sunset. And um, I believe. So I don't, I can't really explain it, but I know what it feels like. I look at my yeah. family and it's just, that's it. That's love, yeah. that's it, right? Whether I can come up with a cheesy uh, line, a, you know, a Paolo Coelho level line, <laughs> Holmes level line of what love is. I don't know, I can't do it. Um, mm. But I look at them, that's it. Like, that's it, and right there. It's, it's hmm. an intense, intense feeling of this is perfect, you know, and I don't know. So we had a guest that said like when his wife gave birth, like it was yeah. like he said, sorry for being graphic, but that moment when she gave birth was like the the moment for him. I was like, you, it's very electric. Um, yeah. At least that's what I felt like when I first yeah. saw my child come out. It is, mm -hmm. it's a really different feeling it's earlier on the show i said you know when you first orgasm uh at 14 or 15 you first ejaculate on your own obviously um mm. you uh you go oh my god that's a that's a uh, what did i say a fire that something burns for an eternity i think it's the line they used right mm. um it's child it's electric like you actually feel like you've been tased 
or zapped. It, it mm. feels, goes throughout your entire body. It's really amazing. And again, that would be my answer. Just that. Yeah. That unique, unique, intense feeling. Yeah. It's like Lion King, the circle of life. Like, man, <laughs> animal planet again. We're We're always like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I, sorry, I couldn't give a better answer than that. Uh, I, that no, was it's perfect. A, no, it's a perfect There's answer. There's no passing grade. There's not, we're not teachers uh, uh, here. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Yeah. We're not. Uh, there's no perfect answer, and there's never I really mean, a right or wrong. I would have liked to give a more profound answer, um, you know, but I can't. Like it, it can't be put into mm. words what it is. You know. So anyway, yeah. One day when we have kids, we're gonna. Yeah, that's call what I said show. when we heard Jay, and he's like, well, "How about you? What's love to you?" I'm like, "Oh, when I pop out a kid, I will tell you." I think. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's what I hear all the time. You know, obviously, there's a lot of parents out there who hate their kids or hate the thing or hate the process. <laughs> Everything I'm just unique to me, absolutely. I look at my family. Can you imagine? Like, you look forward to having a kid and it comes out, you're a little shit. Yeah. <laughs> or I can't wait to get them out of my house when they get old enough. Like, I don't have that. In, in fact, every time we take a family photo, it like that's killing when I see it. I'm like, oh my god, so good. Yeah, every every photo is good, you know. Every that's yeah, yeah, it's love. Oh, I like that. Kini -kini actually for I you. know. I like Mongolian. <laughs> Those are the kinds of descriptions I like. Okay. Ah, okay. So great. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> See, here you are, the ice to the halo halo. Uh, you know? For if it was Bingsu. <laughs> Bingsu, the yeah, the milky ice. Okay. So Bea, we are at the end of our show. Tell me, what did you learn from our guest today? Anything new? <laughs> okay, number one is definitely watch more um animal documentaries. True. <laughs> number two, I you know. Gosh, there was one, that, but it really escaped me. I think having children and a family is something to look forward to. And and you can only get that if you do the golden rule, like you do unto others what you want to yeah. do to mm -hmm. you. So, yeah, we talk about ghosting, cheating, all this stuff. And Remember, like, men are bad species. Like, yes. That's what I want you to take away from this. Take away from yeah. this. Not for electric, love, family. Oh, okay. Men okay. are bad species. Men are bad species, but we love them. We love them. Exactly. We love gotta girls. love men. <laughs> I mean, sometimes like men can be such idiots. Sometimes it's so cute. I love it. <laughs> sure. yeah. How about you, Shari, before we wrap up? Um, Animal Planet, uh, be careful with men. They're yeah. dogs. Um, due yeah. diligence, I like, oh, and conflict cool. resolution. I think yep. those are the things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Due diligence. I should have heard this before. You know what? I was going out with this guy. Yanpala, he was in an open relationship. I should have done my due diligence. Well, it, it, sorry, I know we're coming back and we got to get out here, but it's mm. hard to even. It, you can do diligence. You can mm. do due diligence. And even if in the face of massive red flags, we're going we're gonna to still engage because it's worth it. Like, mm. Like we talk about it all the time on the radio show on the podcast, like, oh, so if this girl is like fucking STDs, like just coming out of her body and like, I'd be like, would you still have uh, like, no, of course not. Well, if it's Pia, where it's back. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. right. oh, we were stunned yeah. when she was on the show. I was like, yeah, like, yeah. Ben and I hell? became the perps. You're like, she was wearing something, you know, very nice. But then sometimes things would just come out of the day and they were like, huh. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Right. Or, or if yeah. you, we were talking, we had a caller recently. Oh, what was it? Um, he was sexually aroused with his niece, like his niece, oh, yikes. for his niece, right? And this was just recently, a couple weeks ago. And um, so instead of going, oh my God, what the fuck? I go, well, why? Like, what is about her? Like, is she hot? Like, tell me, tell me why. I want to know why you feel that way about her. Uh -huh. like, oh, you know, she walks around the house. She doesn't wear a bra. You know, and all that stuff. So we were like, okay, okay, that's awful. Please stop, blah, 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 blah. And then when he hung up the call, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. What if your niece was be your words back? We're like, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, my point is. But I need <laughs> you do your due diligence right even yeah. if in the face of sheer wrong i mean it is wrong as wrong can be some fucker will still find a reason <laughs> be stupid girl or boy right now obviously we're, we're talking i mean the girl was like the niece was like 19 and the guy calling was like 23 you know, it wasn't it's not like she's five years old walking around obviously that's like always always like that but, yeah yeah you know, it was like it's got so dark <laughs> yeah yeah like it wasn't child molestation or anything like but you know he was 23 his niece was like 18 or 19 um you know and all that stuff like that was the context right because now it makes yeah. it look as if you know she was 12 no it, you know they were a couple years apart and it was probably more pinsan than really you know just the way that mm -hmm. that worked but 
but yeah, no, I mean, first cousin. Yeah. Is that bad? Sure. But if he looks like, you know, uh, he looks like uh, Jennifer Rosales, so I'm in, right? I, mean, uh, I guess. My cousin's Brad, but I'm like, oh, I do like my cousin. <laughs> like my cousin, but he didn't tell me he looked like Zac Efron. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. So fascinating. Yeah, I love it. I shut up now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mo. I mean, I'm like wowed, but yes. Um, yeah, anytime. And 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 please, uh, let, uh, just just to add pressure to you guys, uh, I would love to have you guys on the show. It would be a good way to promote your own podcast, say, or what, would you call this a podcast? Or would you call this like a chat show? A what? We're, we're, a cha- we're a chat show on Smarter <laughs> Love. Nah, that is our tagline. I, I would promote your chat show is to maybe jump on mine. So please, um, if, if yes, and I would love We'd to. Love to. Yeah. We'd love Anytime. to. Yeah, but Anytime. we don't talk about yourselves. Huh? We talk about other people. They call. We talk about them. All that shit. So yes. Oh, we love we that. Love that. Yeah. We, we get anonymous callers it. sometimes, and we love it. We yeah. Love it. yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anyway. Thank yeah. So thank you so, so much. much. So, um, let's just do the, our outro, if you don't mind. Please. Um. So, guys, let us quench your thirst for knowledge by subscribing to our YouTube channel and submit your love problems and milestones to our website, thirstyandthirty.club, so you don't miss a beat. We also have a weekly newsletter called The Thirst Trap. You get 150 questions to start a spark when you subscribe. Bay and I tested these questions. So, you know. <laughs> so we send you hope, happiness, and humor in all your inboxes. It is a guide for the modern day woman and man who wants to be smarter and saner. So stay yes, thirsty, yes. everybody. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Mo. Take care. Have a good night. Thirsty and 30.